today's topic is where's that finding hidden or lost treasures in pipeline i've got a lot to cover today so i'll try not to move too quickly but uh Again, lots of different areas that are sometimes overlooked or hard to discover that, that I want to alert you of. So um, again, I'll, I'll breeze through them. I'm not going to cover anything that you can find details about elsewhere. I'll just sort of hit on them so that you can dig deeper if you uh, need more information about it, or of course, ask us. Okay, so let's go over to pipeline. So the first place, obviously, I want to touch on is searching. When you're looking for something, whether it's a transaction or um, maybe a looking via a contact on a transaction, et cetera. The global search and the um, transaction advanced search are two areas that will help you immensely. I'm not going to, again, go too deep into that because there's a help page on that, which is right here, searching, filtering, and sorting, which will tell you all about how to do that, as well as we've covered it in a couple of webinars, um, one specifically, but then some, you know, throughout others. So I'm not going to go into detail about searching other than to just say that you've got the ability to search within specific fields. So if you wanted to search by zip code or search by buyer name or by um, agent's last name, et cetera, you've got that ability, right? And same over here, you've got lots of uh, ad hoc searching features to pull exactly the transactions that you're looking for or can't find. Kind of hard to, once you've got uh, exhausted these two options, um, still not find what you're looking for because they are so robust. You've got pretty much all your options there, okay? The other thing I wanted to, did want to mention, though, about that is that you can toggle between your search operators or your search options here to search within fields and alongside your uh, recent searches, right? So I can either do my um, view my search options or view my recent searches and toggle back and forth. And this will allow me to execute a search that I've run recently, obviously, right, without having to type it again, um, these two searches that I've run, right? Okay, so easy, easy, easy there. Also, kind of along those lines, these are ways to really refine exactly what you're looking for, refine those searches. But sometimes you can just use search shortcuts to get exactly where you need to go. So over here along the left, I've got three different types of searches. I can look at things, uh, transactions that were recently updated, um, recent lookups that I've done, which is similar to what we saw here, right? My recent searches. So my recent lookups, what I've recently viewed, that can be really helpful. I was working on this transaction an hour ago. Instead of having to actually go to one of the menus, I can just look right here in this nice short, short list of the you know, State Memorial Street that I was on and go right to it. Okay, so these shortcut lists are really helpful back there. Alrighty, and then also here at the bottom, recently created. So sometimes you might want to see what transactions agents, if, you, if agents have that permission, which transactions agents have created. You can easily see that list here or yourself, right? And access those easily. Um, and that can be an alternative to being notified about when new transactions are created if you sort of keep an eye on this list here. All right. Okay, so that's all I'm going to cover as far as searching, but obviously searching is huge for finding what you're looking for. Next, I wanted to hop over to unassigned docs, looking at things that are uh, kind of elusive or you're looking for what might not be where you expect it to be. An unassigned doc is um, a great area to, to sort of identify a couple of those particular types of things. Uh, so if I'm on unassigned docs, I might wonder what the fate of a particular document was, where it went, what transaction it went to. Maybe if I'm looking at the transaction and expecting that there should have been a doc assigned to it, but I'm not seeing it on that transaction. Um, I can always come to unassigned docs to find the fate of anything that got assigned from here. Right. So um, and the way that I do that is from my assignment. history. So I can click assignment history and that's going to show me everything um, that was assigned, what a transaction it was assigned to, who did it, when it was assigned, etc. So this can be really helpful when you're trying to troubleshoot exactly where is that document. I know it's here somewhere. Right. And you can toggle through those um, to get those, those, that history from past and likewise, let's say I'm looking for that doc that was supposed to go on, you know, 123 Main Street and it's not there. Um, maybe it got deleted. So I can see deleted docs, the docs that were deleted from unassigned docs here. If I click deleted docs, I can see anything that was deleted. So who deleted it, when, and then re-download it if I need to. Okay. Similarly, if I'm on a particular transaction, if there are any deleted docs, it will tell me. So even though a doc has been deleted, it's not gone forever. Um, so no worries there. 
Um, now, transactions, on the other hand, let's say a transaction were deleted, which the only person who can delete a transaction is a master admin. But if a transaction were deleted, um, you would need to contact us if you wanted to cover it. But just to let you know, it is not gone unless it's been over, I believe it's about three months or so. Um, but if it's been deleted recently, just give us a, a call or shoot us a, a message and um, we can recover that for you as long as we've got the right offers. Next, I wanted to cover um, sometimes or sometimes slash often, uh, you'll get a an agent who says that, or at least we'll get reports of um, agents who can't upload a doc, right? They can get to the transaction, they can see it, um, they can edit it, et cetera, but they can't upload any docs. Whenever that's the case, that typically just means that they don't have permission to upload docs in that particular uh, location. So if I go here, let's go to admin settings and manage users, you just need to be sure that whoever that user is, um, let's say it's for the East River office location, just make sure that they've got upload docs in that location. And, and typically when that happens, it's not because the, per, um, the admin hasn't given the person upload docs at all. They usually have upload docs in some other location, but they just need to have it in the location of the particular transaction that they're trying to upload it to, right? That's usually the problem. They can upload it somewhere else on another transaction, but they can't upload it on um, a particular transaction. It's because that transaction is in a different location where they do not have upload permissions. So just um, double check that. Okay. Um, another um, uh, area I wanted to show you is sometimes you may be expecting that a transaction would appear on your default list of transactions here. When you click transactions, you see that default list. This default list of transactions will only show you transactions um, that are active in one of the active transaction statuses. So if you have a transaction status that is not um, considered an active one, and let me hop over to oops, the admin here. I'm going to go to our transaction statuses. What I mean by active is that it needs to appear in one of these top transaction status sections, not in one of these bottom three. So closed sell through and auto expiry are considered inactive um, transaction status categories. If you have a status that's in one of those categories and you're expecting it to not be closed, then it's not going to show up in that um, on your default list of transactions. In other words, if let's say I've got a transaction status called least, right? And I put it under other because it's kind of other, right? Other is considered an active transaction status category. So if I put it in other, and I look at my default list of transactions, it's going to show in this list, even though it's leased or closed. So you need to be sure that if it's really closed and you don't want it to show up, you put it in one of those closed categories. And then in contrast, like I was saying, if you've got an active status, let's say ready for closing, right? And you put it in closed, um, then that's not going to show up, even though you still want it to show up because it's still active. There are still things that you need to do, do for it. Okay, so again, just be sure that any active statuses are not in one of these three bottom sections um, so that transactions related to those statuses will appear in my list of default transaction statuses. Okay, and next I wanted to mention personal profile settings. Um, even though it's up here under personal profile, a lot of times people overlook it and don't realize all the different options that they've got on here. So I just like to point this out. Particularly, obviously, the settings down here, um, and also these two up here. Me being able to manage your email templates or your um, message templates from personal profile is huge because you can actually edit it, you can share it, etc. So sometimes people don't realize that you've got, they've got that ability here. And then likewise, your commissions. Um, if you if you subscribe to the commissions module, admins as well as agents can come here and run their commissions and. Um, for different particular periods, right, um, directly, so they can run them themselves. So just pointing that out there. Okay. Also wanted to mention every user's got an unassigned docs mail drop address here, right? But what some people sometimes don't realize is that if you go to admin settings and I'll open that in a separate tab, and then manage users, you can actually, and when you download the users list here. It will include all of those users um, and assigned docs and mail drop addresses, right? So that you can, if you want to 
disseminate them to everyone or however you want to use them, you've got a list right here of everyone's unassigned dots and object address. So that's a nice convenient thing to be able to download. Okay. Likewise, same for contacts. When you're on your transactions page, you've got the ability to download all contacts here, right? If I download them, I'll have a nice clean list of all my contacts in the system. Obviously, only admins can do that. Sometimes people use it for, you know, holiday mailing lists or whatever you need to use it for, all right? A couple more things. Let's say you were on a smaller screen, but you and you um, wanted to save room or have more room for your columns. You can actually collapse. If you hover over the, the title here, you can actually collapse. Um, this menu so that you can have icons instead, right? Some people are more visual and they're fine with these icons. I am not. I need the words, but um, it could be helpful for, again, some people who want to see the icons or just want more room for um, the tables on the page. Lastly, what I wanted to show you, um, both on the tasks page and the unassigned page, you've got the ability to hide your columns, right? For that same reason, you might want more room for other columns. Let's say I didn't want to see uh, visibility, right? I don't use that for whatever reason. I can do that and hide that column. Or I wanted to definitely see location, but I've got that ability to do that. That's currently both on the tasks page and the unassigned page. Right? Um, and then very soon, it'll also be on the transactions page and unreviewed. All right? That's all I've got for finding those elusive things today.